What's up, beautiful humans? Welcome back to my channel. And today we are at Epcot, my favorite place in the world. And we're gonna eat some food because it's special of the holidays. Let's do it. Hello, gorgeous. I've missed you so much. and you hear this really loud music, stop what you're doing and just sit for a second because a character cavalcade is coming by. We are seeing our first one of the day and it looks like it's just some dancers and we're seeing, I think it's Santa. We're gonna see, so let's take a look. All right. Hi Santa. There's something growing out of the bottom of your camera. And there's a fuzzy thing on top. <laughs> Hello, Mary. So of course I had to come to Mexico because Los Posadas is always a gem. The Mexico Pavilion always does a great job at every festival. And I think I'm gonna get this uh, giant tostada to de chorizo. Um, the tamales also looks very good, but uh, I think I'm gonna go with the, the, the tostada. You guys know that. So at the Mexico Pavilion, of course I got the giant tostada. It has chorizo, has a salsa verde, some pickled red onions, uh, and it's got some crema and some black bean um, puree, it looks like. So well, let's dig in. Pro tip at the Mexico Pavilion, always get lots of napkins because it is a messy thing to eat something so beautiful. So I'm gonna try and get like the perfect bite and go from there and do my best. Cheers. So good. The crema on here, so good. The salsa verde has a little bit of heat. I wouldn't say it's spicy, um, but it's got a nice like heat flavor to it. Um, the pickled onion is great. The uh, cotilla cheese in here I haven't gotten to yet, but that pickled onion really cuts through and it's really, really nice. And the tostada is perfection. I mean, can you hear this crunch? Mm. Mexico. Always wins. So we got the crab and cheese wontons here at the China booth and the chicken curry, which I heard is fantastic. We ran into people. Look, it's Mike from the Hives of Disney and Josiah. And look, Hello. Amanda. So the curry chicken was delicious. It is really hot though, so be aware of that, but also super flavorful and delicious. The rice is cooked nice. The curry was nice and creamy and delicious, but again, super hot. But my favorite thing so far that we've had, I think better than the chorizo, which is saying a lot. So the number one thing that I always get at the festival of the holidays is from the Bavaria booth, and it is the cheese fondue. And oh, guys, I don't think you understand. They have potatoes, they've got bread, they've got zucchini and carrots. And it is perfect. Get a spoon because it's basically soup. And then you just pick it up with your mouth and eat it because it's cheese pick it up and bread. With your mouth. Yeah, pick it up with your mouth, <laughs> not your hands. Just pick it up with your mouth. They give you bread. They give you potatoes. They give you zucchini. They give you carrots. I don't know why they're giving you vegetables. When this is cheese, give me more bread. Beer cheese is my favorite thing on the face of the planet. And this is the perfect beer cheese because it's from Germany. Okay, Take so at the France the bomb, Pavilion, the bomb. I got the turkey and the puffed potato, so we're gonna try that. And then I also got this beautiful chocolate log. And now I have a, oh, what's this? Amanda, what did you get? Mike got me a hot chocolate martini, or a frozen hot chocolate martini. It tastes, it literally tastes like a frozen hot chocolate. There you go. And it's delicious. This is too expensive, let go. I normally don't like turkey, but 
which is fine. I'm just confused about this. Is it like mashed potatoes on the inside? No, it's mashed potatoes. You usually take it and you whip it with um, eggs and flour. So what happens when you whip it with eggs and flour, and then you take them and they deep fry them. So it's almost think of it like, um, like a fried gnocchi. I don't hate it. No. Because you're expecting a ball of mashed potato, yeah. it's a ball of mashed potato, but it's not. It's almost like it's a, a bread a, potato. It's like a bread, yeah. Huh. So I wanted more of those potatoes. After, After I <laughs> said I didn't like them, I thought they were weird, but the more I ate them, the more I liked them. But I want to try this because why not? Is that peanut butter or is that caramel? It's caramel. I don't say caramel. I'm not I'm proper. I'm proper. Woo! Some chocolate in it. Sweet. That's like so rich and like not in a good way. I don't like that. <laughs> place and there's three booths in here the festival favorites prost and which is just charcuterie board and alcohol which is beer and then you have holiday hearth hearth, hearth. holiday hearth which i'm getting the red velvet bunt cake and the spaceship earth cookie because it's shaped by spaceship earth so why not i'm getting spaceship earth too because prettiest girl in school from holiday hearth i got the spaceship earth cookie and i got the chocolate mickey tart and the red velvet mini bunt cake on the traditional menu at Holiday Hearth. Um, it is on a, like a placard at the front and they have a Santa hat, this chocolate. Sprinkles on top because they're very hard. Once you get past the sprinkles, oh boom. Red velvet. That's lovely. Here is a festival section where you can get a lot of festival uh, exclusive stuff and pins are behind the counter. They have ornaments and they have t-shirts and they also have some uh, French perfume, which is a little odd, but it's in here. Their roster changes so, so much. So the scallops and the beef bourguignon. So we're gonna try that. Mm. That's weird. It's like, there's no ladylike way to eat this, so. Mm. Delicious. I'm gonna play with it then. This is a winner. From the Hawaii booth, I got the 
Kahlua pork and it comes with purple sweet potatoes. So we'll see how that goes. Salt top of mango? What is it? Yeah, mango salsa. Yeah. Or it's mango. Yes, mango. Oh, good. Festival winner, apparently, from everyone else. Guys, I think this is my favorite tree on property because look how beautiful it is at night. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. We'll ask about that. Okay. Just stunning. So a fun thing about Epcot is they do a um, like a layover with Living with the Land, and it is super cool to go at night. To go, so Living with the Land is kind of a greenhouse ride, and it's actually one of my favorites here in Epcot. But during the holidays, they do an overlay of Christmas lights, and they show off so beautifully at night. So we're gonna go do that before we head out. So let's see it. Welcome to our living laboratory where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce powerful harvest and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known these are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world.
these plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like Like what? Wise, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Inspired by nature, okay. like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase the taste and control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we oh, yeah. serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this bird is growing in this way. But the space required by traditional growing methods, that saves water and increases production. The aquaponic system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. These greenhouses represent just a fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. Scientists, farmers, and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to... I don't think this view ever gets old. I mean, look at that. Um, that does it for us here at Festival of the Holidays at Epcot uh, 2020. We ate as much as we could. We hung out with Mike and Amanda. And if you haven't subscribed to them, their link is in the description down below. Check them out. They're great, great, great people. We'll probably see them again this weekend, so they'll probably be in the vlogs again. But thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And turn on that bell notification so you get notified every single time I post a video, which is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Until next time, guys, be beautiful humans. Bye. Want to subscribe? Click or tap right here. Want more from this adventure? Click or tap right here. Want more from Epcot? Click or tap right here.